Good afternoon, Cornerstone Church. Today is Wednesday, June 10th. Good to see you. I'm very glad you're tuning in to this brief pastoral update today. Uh, This is going to be an important one. I've got two very important subjects to talk about briefly. I'm not going to answer all the questions or solve all the problems, but I do want to talk about our ongoing response to COVID in our church and certainly address the civil unrest that we're seeing in our country. I don't want us to be quiet on that issue. So first, in terms of COVID, uh, we've really appreciated everyone cooperating and very uh, patiently and graciously uh, going along with the safe and healthy practices we've put in place for our weekend services. I wanna say we're gonna be dialing back a couple of them and maintaining a couple of them. So first, uh, we are not going to be taking temperatures at the door any longer. Uh, We are gonna ask you, Cornerstone Body, if you know you have a fever, please stay home. Um, If you have any of the symptoms that were listed on the email I sent out to the church body, uh, please, we love you, just stay home for the good of the body so that no one is infected. But Hey, if you're coming to church, you will not see people taking temperatures at the door. We're we're gonna do away with that piece. Uh, We are gonna continue to encourage people to wear masks. Uh, What we've found, at least at this point, is that the longer we are around one another, the greater our chance of infection. So that's why we're encouraging people to wear masks. Uh, Social distancing, we are also going to maintain some social distancing as best we can. Here's what I'm going to ask you. We're going to add some chairs in the sanctuary. We think that will actually allow people to social distance more. And please, uh, we're just going to ask you to please uh, follow the usher's lead. They're going to seat you three seats apart from the next family. So just do your best to maintain that six feet of social distance. We are thrilled to be seeing everyone again on the weekend services. And if you are at home and you still don't feel safe or comfortable or you're in a vulnerable population, that's absolutely fine. We miss you and we love you, but we're so glad to see so many of you tuning in to our live stream. So hope that's helpful regarding COVID. I do wanna uh, turn our attention and very briefly address just as a pastor of Cornerstone Church, some of the civil unrest that has been going on in our country. We we as leaders are very aware of what's been going on. Some of us have attended events uh, that have that are precisely to do with some of the civil unrest that is going on regarding injustice, uh, racism, abuse of power. Uh, as followers of Jesus, unequivocally, without question, we stand against racism, injustice, and the abuse of power, clearly, obviously. Uh, I want to encourage you scripturally, the best, the best guide I have as a follower of Christ, as a follower of Christ, my guide is the Holy Spirit and as he guides me in his word, his word is what leads me and guides me in how to address and navigate extremely difficult times. No human being is going to deny that the death of George Floyd was outrageous and wrong. Period. When it comes to discussions, when it comes to civil unrest, I just want to give us three very simple biblical principles to guide us in how we engage what's going on in our country. Uh, again, I, I'm, I can't, I'm not going to solve all the problems today. I'm not going to answer, I couldn't possibly answer all the questions in this short video, but the best I can do is turn us to the gospel and turn us to the word of God for some guidance first. First, Matthew 5 in the Sermon on the Mount, he is very, Jesus is very clear in saying, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. The peacemakers, not the peacekeepers. Peacekeepers just want everybody to just go back to normal and let's all, <laughs> let's just not worry about it. Let's just, everyone just bury it. That's a peacekeeper. That's not what he says. He says, blessed are the peacemakers. You know what that means to us that call ourselves follower of Jesus? We get to participate and we're called to participate in peacemaking 
in our lives, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in our communities, in our state, in our country, and in our world. Second, in James chapter 1, James is uh, very clear when it comes to navigating very difficult conversations such as the one we're having where it it seems like everyone has an opinion and people are very angry when someone expresses an opinion different from them here's what James says this is the second principle know this my beloved brothers let every person be quick to hear slow to speak slow to anger for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God in any discussions in any uh, protests that you engage in any conversations you have with people even people that may disagree with you quick to listen slow to speak slow to become angry third and finally in Revelation 7 the Apostle John is given a glorious vision of all people in heaven worshiping God. Here's what he says in Revelation chapter 7. After this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. The picture that John was given was of people from all races, all nations, all tribes, all lands, worshiping God together with one another. There is nothing in this gospel that promotes, foments, or tolerates the slightest degree of racist thought or ideology from me towards anyone else, or anyone else towards me, or you towards anyone else or anyone else towards you. My hope and prayer for all of us, not just here at Cornerstone, but for the kingdom of God at large, is that we would be ever growing in our devotion to Jesus and not necessarily what I think or feel at any given time. Would you join me, Cornerstone Church, in praying for our country leadership, our state leadership? Would you pray for people that actively feel discriminated against? But would you pray for them? And also we are called to pray for our enemies. Would you pray for those, even for those who act in discriminatory ways? We are called to pray for them that they would have a Holy Spirit regenerated heart change. Certainly as followers of Christ, we are called to engage in battles against systemic evil. We are. Ultimately, our goal is to know Christ deeply and personally and to help others know that same Christ and to find freedom and joy and purpose in knowing Him and allowing His life to affect how I think about myself, the world, and others. We love you, Cornerstone Church. We're looking forward to seeing you this weekend. Talk to you soon.